moderator, Carmen Reese, who is going to share information with us about town meeting, including special town meeting, which we have coming up. Go for it, Carmen. Uh, thanks, Terry. I actually wasn't prepared to talk about special town meeting this morning, but rather about the annual town meeting process that involves okay. all of the committees. But uh, if there are questions about special town meeting, I can certainly answer those. Um, are, do you still want me to be done by 11:15? Uh, uh, you're on mute, Terry. How about? Um... 11, 20 or so. Yeah. Okay, all right, well, I'll do my best. I will uh, try and talk fast. Um, okay. Can everybody see my screen okay? Yes, okay, great. So, um, so, Concord relies very heavily on its citizen uh, committees and boards as part of its government, as we've as has really come across clearly this morning, and um, they are an integral part of our town meeting. And town meeting is not a single event or a single uh, day; it is a process uh, which involves a year's worth of budgeting and legislative action. Um, and takes uh, months and months of work and preparation by an awful lot of different people. So um, the process for uh, town meeting really starts in August, goes through December, and uh, we are working through the budget. Uh, we are working through the Community Preservation Act, uh, the planning board, uh, and, and uh, to a lesser extent, the Zoning Board of Appeals are working on zoning bylaw amendments. Uh, individual committees may have articles that they wish to uh, sponsor and bring before town meeting. Uh, and of course, citizens, um, we have a robust citizen petition practice here in Concord, and uh, those are in process as well. Uh, so um, the cycle in, gets involved, gets started with um, uh, once that preparation is underway, we have the preparation of the warrant. So this year that's happening in, in January and February. The town preview meeting will be, town meeting preview meeting will be on January 8th. The warrant will open that day. Um, and the warrant is gonna close February 2nd and everyone's draft articles will be due on January 28th. Um, you should not be waiting until January to have your draft article. Uh, you should absolutely be working way before that and um, feel free to contact me, your select board liaison um, or your committee uh, staff support uh, in town with um, any questions or help that you need on that. The warrant will close at four o'clock on February 2nd this year. And once we have all the articles in, we go through the whole warrant with uh, town council. Um, the select board approves the order of the warrant uh, and uh, signs the warrant. The warrant gets printed, posted, and it gets mailed to every household. Then we start our hearing cycle. And um, th this year, the select board will start off the hearings on February 28th, and the remainder of the hearings will happen uh, in March. We have a very robust pre-town meeting hearing um, practice here in Concord, which is not necessarily the same in every town. Uh, every single article that comes before town meeting will be the subject of a public hearing discussion before town meeting. Um, and the finance committee has three hearings um, on different types of budget uh, meetings. The planning board has one hearing and the select board will ha have a hearing that um, addresses every warrant article that doesn't fit in somebody else's bucket. Uh, once that uh, cycle of hearings is uh, completed, the consent calendar gets finalized. Uh, that falls to me as moderator to propose what will go on the consent calendar. I make those determinations uh, through a lot of uh, experience with past practice, but what's very important is the public reaction to things uh, at hearings and uh, how routine matters are. And then I bring that uh, consent calendar as proposed to the select board to have a conversation with them about it. Uh, and we include the consent calendar in the finance committee report. 
um, the finance committee uh, will be um, uh, sending its report to the printer. All the motions have to be submitted. We then have a motions review meeting with town council. Finance committee report gets mailed to households. And then we begin the process of getting ready for the actual town meeting itself. Uh, I need to review all of the town meeting presentations and handouts um, uh, before they are presented at town meeting. Um, and then we have a, uh, an annual town meeting presentation coordination meeting at which we discuss who's presenting on what and um, uh, how long everyone will have to present on their various articles. Uh, and at that meeting, we also discuss whether particular boards and committees would like time uh, to address a particular article with their recommendation, uh, even if they aren't actually presenting the article. The last couple of years have been very uh, strange uh, town meetings uh, because of COVID. I think this year we are likely to go back to a much more uh, normal cycle uh, like what we had before uh, COVID and that these meetings will happen probably uh, either on Zoom or in a hybrid um, format. Okay, so um, the annual town meeting, um, the dates uh, this year are May 1 through 4. These are now reserved in everybody's calendars. Uh, the PowerPoint presentations are all going to be approved and preloaded on the town's computers for the town to handle, town staff to handle presenting those at town meeting. Uh, all handouts need to get approved, copied, delivered to town meeting. Uh, everyone has rehearsed their speaking uh, for town meeting and made sure that it fits within their time limit. And if there are any amendments, uh, those have been vetted and prepared. And this is all done in April before we get to our town meeting in May. So the committee responsibilities for an article at town meeting. If your committee is developing an article and sponsoring an article, you need to develop that proposal within your own committee structure. Um, that means observing the open meeting law uh, important to take and consider public comment. This is so important to be have a, a proposal that's really ready for prime time by the time you get to town meeting with it. The more advanced work you've done with the public, the better. Um, important to coordinate with other committees that might have an overlap in interest on whatever you are sponsoring. Great to get on their agenda for a conversation, come to their meeting to present, uh, or ask uh, otherwise for their uh, input as a committee uh, for your committee. When you're sponsoring an article, it becomes particularly important to keep your minutes up to date and posted uh, because uh, the public is watching and uh, people who are interested in a particular proposal really are following the committee meetings. And if they can't get to a meeting, they're looking at the minutes and they would like to have them on a timely basis. Um, if you are thinking about proposing an article as a committee, you really want to talk to your select board liaison about that. There are only certain committees that have, uh, as of right, uh, the ability to place a matter on the warrant. Uh, that's the planning board, for example, has the right to do that by statute. Uh, other than that, uh, pretty much everything that goes on the warrant is there at the pleasure of the select board, unless it is a properly submitted citizen petition uh, submitted by uh, 10 voters. Uh, so you do want to be coordinating with your select board liaison to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, so if your article that you're proposing has a financial impact, then it will be your responsibility to uh, figure out what kind of financial impact it will have on the town, if it needs an expenditure of funds to identify the source of those funds. And you, if you have committee staff report, uh, support, rather, you'll want to talk with them uh, about discussing funding issues with the town manager. And if you don't have uh, staff support, then you'll want to talk with your appointing authority uh, about funding issues. It's also really important to be in touch with your finance committee observer. Um, not every committee has a finance committee observer. If you don't have one, then you can contact the finance committee chair 
um, just to get on the finance committee's radar screen early enough if you have a proposal that involves money. Um, your proposed article will be done ideally by mid-November. You wanna use staff support, you wanna use select board liaison support. And uh, sometimes a committee will ask for town council review of a proposed warrant article. That needs to be coordinated uh, through the town manager uh, uh, who is the gatekeeper on uh, the expenditure of funds for legal services. And you can either ask your select board liaison uh, to make that request or go directly to the town manager's office. And if you are, if your committee is proposing an article, sponsoring an article, you wanna be prepared to talk about it at the town meeting uh, uh, preview meeting uh, in uh, January. Okay, then um, again, if you're sponsoring an article, you will wanna finalize your article for the warrant and just a word about process. The article is what gives notice to the voters when it, the warrant goes to everybody's house and any voter can peruse the warrant and see what's gonna be addressed as a matter of topic uh, at town meeting. The article is not what we actually act on at town meeting. What we actually act on is a motion brought under the article. So uh, the article gives notice, it usually has uh, are, uh, or take any other action relative there to action that is in there that is wiggle room language that allows us to uh, vary a motion just slightly from what may appear in the warrant as a matter of notice, but not too much, has to be within scope. Uh, and uh, as I say, we are, uh, let's see, we'll need our draft articles by January 28th. In the final article, if you get any comments back on it, warrant closes February 2nd, the language uh, should be final by that. We do sometimes tweak slightly language after February 2nd, especially if uh, town council advises that um, that, that should happen, uh, but um, uh, nothing can be changed up in the article once the warrant goes to print. So, um, if you are sponsoring an article, uh, someone from your committee will present your article at the pre-town meeting hearing that it is taken up at. Uh, and think about that hearing as an opportunity to rehearse your presentation for town meeting. Uh, it's great to have your motion drafted in time for that hearing, but it's not required. Uh, and if you're doing PowerPoint slides for the hearing. There is an electronic presentation guideline and template that's available on the website under the town meeting tab, and you can download that and use it as your template for creating your slides. Um, there are a lot of requirements about type, size, and color, and so forth that uh, make presentations a little easier for us to see. Um, you are likely to receive comments and questions at hearings and think about those as ways to improve their opportunities to get feedback for improving your presentation uh, and perhaps uh, for modification of a motion that might be brought under your article if um, some tweaking seems like it is going to uh, uh, better meet with public support for the article. Um, and then the motion will have to be uh, submitted by uh, the deadline. I don't believe we've set that for this year yet. Uh, perhaps we have. Um, and again, the motion is what we act on at town meeting. Motion needs to be within the scope of the article, which uh, can't have surprises to uh, the voting public on what exactly is going to be taken up at town meeting. So any motion made has to be uh, properly within the notice that was given about what will be taken up. Town Council does review all of our motions. And in general, our motions that are under 100 words are presented on a first and last PowerPoint slide at town meeting. And anything over 100 words needs to be uh, printed on a handout. And uh, that is um, uh, just because you can't read it on the screen if it's more than 100 words. 
Uh, and then the, what is projected on the screen would be moved as printed in the handout and everyone knows they should be looking for a handout for this motion. Um, again, there are, uh, we need advanced submission of PowerPoints and handouts. There are guidelines. Um, I review every single presentation and give people feedback and comments. Um, the uh, authorship of uh, presentations does belong to presenters and committees, but I will make suggestions um, uh, to you. Uh, we preload, as I mentioned, all of the PowerPoint presentations on the town's computers for projection at town meeting. That enables us to run a more streamlined uh, meeting uh, and be a little faster. Um, Handouts need to be copied double sided on white paper and uh, you can be in touch with me before town meeting I'll let you know how many people we expect to be attend in attendance on the night your article is coming up uh, at town meeting and then um, those handouts have to be delivered to the high school by six o'clock on the night that your article is likely to come up or you can deliver your handouts to the town manager's office by noon on that day and the town manager's office will bring your handouts to the meeting. Uh, if you are sponsoring an article, you'll receive notice of when the town meeting coordination meeting um, will happen. And at that meeting, uh, we will have a list of all, we will create a list of all of our presenters so we know who we're looking for. And uh, there will be requests made for speaking times and speaking times allotted. And um, they aren't always what's requested. So you're gonna have to do your best. Uh, and the town clerk does notice all committees for meeting on all nights of town meeting. Um, the open meeting law technically doesn't apply when committees are uh, meeting at town meeting, uh, but nonetheless, if the committee is going to be, uh, for example, uh, taking a vote on a recommendation on an amendment, which you can't know about in advance of uh, town meeting, perhaps, um, it's good to have a meeting called so that you're doing that within a properly called meeting. Uh, okay, so um, when you're making a presentation to town meeting, uh, really important to actually stand in front of the mirror or um, uh, get your spouse to sit at the table and let you do the presentation, uh, time yourself, and there is a video tutorial on speaking at town meeting that um, Aaron Stevens created um, and, um, and it's lovely to watch. She gives you some uh, great tips about where to be vis-a-vis -vis the microphone, et cetera. Now, if you're not sponsoring an article, committees and boards still have responsibilities connected with town meeting. Uh, first of all, you gotta read the warrant and uh, make sure that you have taken note of any article within the warrant that is uh, within your committee's uh, charge. If it's a topic that fits within what your committee does in town. And if it does, you wanna be sure that you place a discussion of that article on one of your meeting agendas. If you think it's appropriate, you may wish to invite the article sponsor to that meeting to talk with you about the article. Uh, it's a great idea to invite and consider public comment. Um, and uh, this is all with the goal of coming up with your committee or board's recommendation for action uh, or deciding whether you wanna make a recommendation for action uh, on a motion under the article at town meeting. Uh, it's probably best practice to hold off making uh, your board or committee's recommendation um, on an article until after the hearing has been held on that particular article so that any new information that comes up at that hearing uh, is um, also in your uh, bucket of things to consider as you consider a recommendation. So um, if there are articles at town meeting that are within your committee scope, it would be terrific to aim for robust attendance of your committee at the meeting. Uh, it often um, uh, happens that um, uh, there'll be questions from the audience that will uh, come directly to your board or committee about what you think about this article or that article. 
Uh, and uh, if you do wish to deter make a, a, a statement at um, uh, the hearing or at town meeting, uh, then um, you need to um, have that statement prepared subject to the open meeting law. So as uh, Kari has discussed, you can't be uh, preparing a statement and circulating it by email for comments. Uh, you have to do that in the context of uh, a posted meeting. Um, and uh, if you are attending as a committee at the uh, hearings uh, pre-town meeting, uh, it'll be important to notice um, a meeting of your committee that coincides with the date, time, and place of that hearing, uh, so that if you do want to take have any discussion as a committee um, at that hearing, you can do so. So your recommendation options are, you can recommend affirmative action, that's a yes vote. You can recommend no action, that's a no vote. Or you can just not make a recommendation. Those are the choices. Uh, and if you are making a recommendation, you can uh, request time to address the meeting from the moderator. You can ask the moderator to announce your recommendation without making any statement. You can prepare a handout on your recommendation. And it's also uh, open to your committee to have a member of the committee come to a microphone on the floor and simply note that they are speaking for the thus and such committee uh, and they have a recommendation and they wanna say a few words about the article. Um, if you do want to address the meeting formally, um, it is important to come to that coordination meeting so we know that you wanna do that and give you some time. Um, and if you want uh, your recommendation announced, you can send me that request. Uh, you can always find me at moderator at conqueredma.com. Um, now, um, the question was raised at the end of um, uh, Kari's presentation uh, about uh, folks coming to speak in public settings, not as committee members, but as individuals. So this happens a lot at, at town meeting. And um, if you are a member of a board or a committee and you step up to a microphone at on the floor of town meeting, chances are that folks attending town meeting know that you are a member of the public works committee, the planning board, or what have you. And it's important to be clear if you're not speaking for the committee that you're not. And that way the community is not confused. Of course you have as a member of the voting public uh, here in Concord, uh, a right to get up and speak your individual view on the floor of town meeting. Uh, but it is important for people to understand that that's what you're doing, that you're not speaking on behalf of your committee. Um, I do think that it is um, one of the sticky places is we have had on occasion a committee vote to recommend uh, a particular action on a motion under an article and um, a dissenter um, from that view come to a microphone on the floor of town meeting and speak as an individual against what their committee voted. Um, uh, in my view, that is not a best practice. It is, um, it, it's, um, uh, every individual has the right to do that, but it is confusing for the public to have members of a committee standing up and speaking against what a committee has done. The better practice is for uh, a committee with a view that was a divided view to note that in their summary of a view to the meeting and indicate what the minority view was, uh, but indicate that the majority, however, felt X, Y, Z. And that way that's taken care of. Um, but um, that's my personal point of view on, uh, on best practice there. Uh, but we don't have uh, town rules on that. If you do want to distribute a handout, uh, there are guidelines for the preparation of handouts. Uh, again, send them to me in advance. Um, 
And uh, typically what we do is we, create, we have a website, um, I'm sorry, an email address called um, uh, TM submissions at concordma.gov. And that's where all of the pre-town meeting submissions go. And that has a pretty good circulation uh, uh, to me as well as members of town staff. Uh, so we make sure we don't miss anything and we make sure that everything in its um, uh, final form is loaded to the town's uh, computers for presentation at the meeting. Um, okay. Um, so Concord relies really heavily on boards and committees for so much of its good governance. And we're very grateful to all of you and thank you very much. And I am gonna stop there. Thank you very much, Carmen. I know um, there was limited time and you covered a lot. Uh, there's, so uh, Nick Pappas, do you have a question? Uh, Nick, you're on mute. Okay, sorry. Um, Carmen, it relates to the distinction between the articles and the motions. Uh, articles can go on for pages, especially things like zoning changes. Um, and, and can you give a sort of a simple example of how an, a motion for such a thing would be sort of the outline of it or something? Sure. Uh, so many times, um, especially if a motion, if a, an article has gone on for pages, we, if there aren't any changes to it that have happened through the hearing process, uh, we can often simply have the motion be moved as printed in the warrant. Um, and that is fine. And um, uh, we recognize that the warrant still has that or take any other action relative there to language in it. Uh, but town council has uh, discussed that with us and is of the view that that's not a problem. If we move an article as printed in the, in the warrant, um, that's fine as a matter of legal practice. If there's any kind of change to the language that's in the article, uh, that has to be noted in a warrant. And we do sometimes have a long warrant article with a bunch of changes. And in order for people to understand what changed from the language of the warrant article, we'll have a red line printed up as the motion. Um, and then that's a handout distribution so that people can see what that looks like. Um, uh, other times there are, uh, there may be, um, funding choices where several funding choices are identified in the article, but one of them is chosen by the time we get to town meeting. And in that case, the motion would need to specify what the funding source is. And sometimes funding amounts will have wiggled just a little bit. Uh, the general rule is they can't wiggle more than about 10% um, uh, and still be within the scope of the warrant. Um, uh, and uh, I would say that that 10% rule doesn't apply when the numbers are really big. <laughs> um, but so those are kind of the general um, rules um, on motions under articles, but they will vary in particular situations. And I'm always available to help um, discuss what a motion should look like. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. 